what I want to provide you in this video is help. If you are somebody who is wanting to uh, renegotiate, if you're looking for a job, you're negotiating a salary, any kind of money situation, and this doesn't even have to be in your career. I've used what I learned in this video I'm going to share right now, buying a car. So this is just like negotiating 101, okay? So I'm gonna give the tea at the story, what happened and how I came to this conclusion, and I'm gonna give you the example of how it worked, and it did work. And I was scared trying it, but it worked. Okay, so it was many years ago, and I was working in corporate, and I was offered a promotion. And it meant some extra travel, it meant some extra responsibilities, right? And my kids have always been my priority. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll see how it all goes. Like, I'll see how, what the complete offer is. And what I also did in that time is I scrambled and I got some negotiation books. I listened to some videos. I'm like, how do you negotiate? Like, how do you do this? Right? I'm like, because I'm a single parent. Now I'm like, I've got to, I've got to really make smart decisions for me and my family and making sure it's, you know, I'm not giving up too much of my time with them for a promotion and making sure I'm being compensated fairly, right? So I went through this whole like journey of thinking about what I really wanted, which is step number one really in many ways, right? What do you, what do you really want? And second of all, then what I really want monetarily. So I'll, I had a number in my head. I decided what I felt, what I was doing, where the value was. I kind of knew the market. I also knew what other people in the company made. Like I did my research, okay? And I'm like, well, how do I get to that number? Like I've got the number in my head, but how do I get there? And I read books and eventually where it took me was actually a book. And I don't even remember what it was called. I'm gonna be honest, it was so many years ago now, but basically said that when men negotiate, you know, like a pay increase, what they do is they just tell their number. That's their number. They put it out there. What women do, we put our number out there and then we give the 20 reasons why we justify and feel we are worth that money. But in doing that, what we actually do is we completely devalue ourselves, give away our power. What we basically say is we don't think we're worth it, so we're going to keep justifying it over and over and over and over again. And that was really profound for me. I was like, wow, I totally do that. <laughs> I totally do that. So the time came for the call. It was the phone in that time. We didn't have all the Zoom calls, and my boss phoned me. And what I did at the time was I put all these sticky notes around my monitor that said like stop talking don't say so much like just don't I don't care what I have to do anymore like I said I'll put sticky notes anywhere to remind myself of what I want to do so the call started and he came on he he made me an offer and it was pathetic like I'm going to be honest all I could think of in my head was there's no freaking way I'm taking this job and all they want me to do for that money I think it was like two and a half three percent raise like it was an insult but I didn't I didn't let him on to how I was feeling about any of that. I didn't let my emotions kind of get the best of me and start justifying why that was wrong and anything else. I didn't go anywhere down there. All I said was, that is less than I was expecting. And I shut up. I didn't say one other word. Not one other word. Dead silence. Awkward silence. But I had my post-its. <laughs> I didn't fill the gap because that's what women do because we value relationships right women value relationships and I knew that we don't like that awkward silence so we fill it the moment we do that we shoot ourselves in the foot so I stayed silent I stayed silent and the time dragged on and finally he filled it he couldn't stand the silence anymore it was like it was like a battle of the will who can give in like it was a it was like a you know a stare contest with your dog or something it's like who's gonna give in first but in that time I just stood in my power I'm like didn't kind of get all worried but I'm like no because I read the books I knew I knew this was what I needed to do I was scared of course and he started to fill the space he said a few words and then I told him one or two reasons 
that was it. I felt I need to like justify my value, like what I'm doing, why, why? I think that's important too, right? You always want to make sure you're providing and displaying how you're creating value. But there's a difference between showing your value and hustling for your worthiness. There's a fine line there. So I mentioned one or two reasons, I can't remember how many it was, on why it was low. And he came back with, yeah, you're right. I, I need to go back to HR and negotiate this again. And he came back, I think it was three days later, and he had my number. I don't know how he had my number because I didn't tell him. He had my number, bang on, to the dollar. And it was about a 20% raise. So I have used that ever since, like I said, negotiating a car. I just go in, this is what I want. I don't fill a bunch of words. I don't go into it. And I bought my cars. Like I, I've had men go, do you want me to come with you shopping? I'm like, no, oh, I'm good. I can do it on my own. Negotiating one-on-one, I've, I've owned it. So if you're in that position, like I said, really think about how you're negotiating. Are you hustling for your worthiness when it comes to money? Or are you knowing your worth, knowing your value and standing in that?